Hello buddies, in today's video I will show you my new PvE single target Dreadnought build. So there's been a lot of requests to show you my build and that's what I will do in, in this video. And in addition I will also add some gameplay and rotation on how to, to actually play the fighter. Because the build is an uh, important part but also the gameplay is like maybe the most important part. How you play really determines your DPS. So let's start with uh, the build. Before I start, I will just show you the consumables I use before I forget them. So basically I use the old watermelon sorbet that gives 10% power and accuracy. Personally, I didn't buy them. I had a couple like in all, on all of my tunes. So for me, I use them because uh, that's what I can use. But for you, if you are a new player, you can choose any kind of, of event food uh, there, now there's like 5% watermelon sorbet, 5% accuracy, and they will drop into the, st the summer festival that that comes uh, really soon. So you can farm them, but at the lesser version. Or you can buy them for like pretty expensive. Uh, secondly, the superior flask of potency plus one for the crit severity, 7.5%. Those ones are super cheap. You can craft them with your profession or you can buy them super cheap. So this is really, really easy to get. The Wildstorm Elixir, 10% crit severity. This one too is really easy to get. You just pray every day and you can buy them with your prey token or you can also just buy them with the, in, the, in the auction house. Uh, fourth, the Seer Tuna. You can play with any stronghold food that you want. Me personally, I use the Critical Strike, but there's the the one that gives power. You can use. There's also the one that gives uh, movement speed, accuracy. So just use any kind you want. Invocation Blessing. It's pretty much random, so I don't know what stats I gain from it. And lastly, the Diamond's Blessing. Those can be a bit expens expensive if you didn't open a lot of diamond boxes. But personally, I spent a couple of <laughs> millions trying to get my companion gear out of it, like in, in episode 1 of Sharandar. But So I, I got a lot of them. But those ones, they're a bit tricky to use. You cannot really like pop it right away. You need to equip them in your potion tray. And after that, you can like activate it and you need to remove it like with the potion tray and they only last 15 minutes so be sure to really pop it if you know that the, the dungeon you will do will last less than 15 minutes like most of Zariol and Tom groups and I use that uh, most of the time to really beat someone other DPS that I really want to beat so it's more like a try hard <laughs> buff than anything, anything, anything else and yeah, you see my other kind of food there. So that's the, the food I use mostly for a single target for my build. So for the gear, nothing much changed since the last build. I play with the Helm of Skyblazer for 7% combat advantage for one single target. Uh, you can also just play with Bless Whisper Hood of Quiet. But I prefer to play with combat advantage since it gives more damage Overall, that way. You can also pair with Goristuro Horns, but I heard that the Goristuro horn, Horns doesn't stack with the Ribcage, so be careful about that. So, the, uh, I prefer to use Helm of the Sky Blazer. And for the Overload, I use Devil's Precision, 5% critical chance, 5% accuracy that you get from Help It event. So, that's just an event. If the event is there, just farm it and you can buy a lot of them. A lot of them. And utility slot, dark, and accuracy modification on the on the armor. So for the, the, the chest, for now it's the the rib cage. It's the, from the tier three hunt in the in the Avernus. Uh, this can be pr pretty pricey, but that's the, the the best of the best of the best chest there is for DPS. I mean, how can we beat like 25% of extra stats? <laughs> Like, it's really hard to beat. And I use an Elven Battle because that's what I add for PvP and for my tank. So I just use that for my DPS also. It's kind of nice to regen your stamina because sometimes I have to block some hits and I lose stamina. So I want it to regen faster. But most of the time in combat you don't really want to lose stamina. But sometimes I don't have a choice. 
and defense slot, I use tactical. You can use tactical or Azores for awareness or defense. Uh, I don't really know which which are the best. Anyway, it's defense slot, so we don't really care. I just put awareness or, or defense, and I use accuracy for modification. For the the gloves, spike defender, fan brace. Uh, like a lot of really strong DPS are playing with them because you get uh, damage re resistance when you hit the target and the moment you take damage it transfers into damage. So for trials, uh, it's not 100% uptime, but it's really really like frequent uptime because you take a bunch of damage randomly like from random sources, so it kind of procs often. Or you can also play with the Blessed Divine Raid Vamp Braces gain power, but the thing with that is that you cannot permanently get the 5k power because after like 10 seconds, yeah, yeah, for 10 seconds, you lose all your stacks and you need to like do 20 attacks before regaining all your all of your power. So relying on doing multiple hits before doing a rotation to get maximum power, it's not really fun. Like you need to to do your at will like 20 times to have it procced, and you will miss out a lot of, uh, of big DPS like in rotations and all. So I just prefer to go all in straight away with those gloves that I don't need to prepare beforehand. And for overload, I use total b total damage bonus, but you can also use greater corrupt black eyes enchantment uh, for AP gain. That's a uh, pretty pretty strong. And again, darks and utility. For my weapon, always mastered bronzewood, makaha hul hutai hulli plus one. So those weapons, <laughs> in my opinion, are best in slot. I don't care what every uh, what like anyone say. Like, oh, maybe Lionheart is better. No, those stronghold weapons are best for everyone. So if everyone can play with it, it will be my dream. But that's not, the, that's not the case, sadly. There's also Mirage weapons, but I, I don't really want to play with Mirage. I just want to play for the team to boost damage reduction, outgoing damage, 10% for everyone. everyone. So that's, that's my weapon of choice that I always use, no matter the dungeon, I never remove them. So I always use them. Even though I may, I may lose some personal damage, but the team is better than your individuality. So for the weapon, I use Biotorn. I mean, Biotorn is just the best weapon enchant for single target. Offensive slots, assassins in every offensive slots except one, where you want to play with Tenebrous, because Tenebrous is pretty strong. Uh, for the offhand, like, mastered weapon again. Uh, defense Azor or Tactical, your choice. Azor uh, Offense, Assassin. Oh yeah, for the modification, I play with AV Slash modification. AV Slash. And for the Offend, I play with the Power one. Max Power, by the way. And Recharge Speed. For the Boots, I play with the Rusted Iron Leggings. S like, I gain 5% damage and I decrease my incoming heat healing by 25%, but incoming healing, like, it's not that important. Yeah, if you take a lot of damage, it might be important, but if you learn the mechanics of the dungeons, like, you don't lose health that often, or if your team knows how to play. But if you really don't want to play with them, you can play with the Bless Greaves of the Light Guard. You, we, you will get a bunch of power that you will need to remove elsewhere, but you can play with those. And in the new uh, dungeon hardcore boss uh, they will release new boots that give combat advantage so th they might be better I would have to see and so that's it for yeah the boots for accuracy but for the modification and darks uh, again so for the weapons for the artifacts uh, I kind of love the heart of the black dragon set the the three dragon set because it gives 10% recharge speed when we have three of them Sadly, even though we want to always play with it, sometimes in the 10 dungeons you are not the only one to play with the Heart of the Black Dragon. And 
someone else wants to play with the set. So there's other alternative that I switch to if I someone really wants to play with the set. You can play with the Frozen and Venom and Flayed Storyteller Journal, or you can also equip the, the Dark one. But you you will you you will use Frozen in your active slot and the other two for your passive slots. Because Frozen stacks with, with each other, so multiple people can run it and it will not be... Like, it will be good for everyone. And, but if, like, you don't have the, the Storyteller set, or you don't want to run it, or someone else say, like, don't run it, you can also play with other kind of artifacts, like debuff artifact, like Vanguard's Banner, Lantern, Blast Scepter, Knives, uh, Staff of Flower is only in passive slot, uh, Sparking Fey Emblem. You can play with any kind of 450 item level artifact in any of the artifact slots. So, first choice, Heart of the Black Dragon. If you can't, Frozen. If you can't, just play with any kind of other deep of artifact and any kind of other artifact. So, and I play with the music box because the music box set is really strong. 15% damage when not facing and uh, when the enemy is not facing you really strong So I play with the music set before I was playing playing with apocalypse set, but Most of the time I play with people that run apocalypse set So I don't really need to play with it because it doesn't stack So I just let others run it And it boosts my personal DPS. So that's people. That's what people want and uh, my modification is combat advantage but advantage is just too good. Assassin and Dark again. My uh, yeah, the the ways is the the same with uh, tactical for awareness and 880 combat advantage. For the rings, that those rings can be really time consuming for you to to farm in the Vault of Star. So you can play with any ring that you want. Uh, I had like other kind of rings before, like the. Striking Ring of the Veteran for 3% melee. I mean, those rings are just higher item level with kind of the same bonus. And this one for 5% power and 2.5% accuracy. You can play with any ring, it's not really game breaking those rings. It's just pr pretty, like, pretty, pretty strong. But nothing game breaking, you can play with anything you have. And Assassins in both. Offensive slots. Uh, yeah, I said that. For the shirt, I play with the tunic of the gifted negotiator. Uh, like those are the tier three uh, shirt, but you can also farm the plus four from the the new Eric events in uh, in the the new Sharondor zone. They are basically the same, it's just that I always kept those ones because I don't want to change them. And this in this slot I use a Tenebrous, so that's the slot I use a Tenebrous. And for the pants, pants of the Hell Interrogator, same thing, you can farm the plus four and it will basically do the same thing. And I play with a tactical and defense. So that's the, the gear. And the thing that might ch like change most of the time, but not really, it's the, the powers. Like the powers are the same as the other video. Commander Strike, a Vol of Doom, Bull Charge, Reeve, and a Heavy Slash. That's your main like core. Some people prefer to play with Griffin's Right instead of Commander Strike, but personally I prefer the the low cast time of Commander Strike 0.8 second compared to Griffin's Right. It's it says 0.55 but it's much like it feels like much higher than that and it's it, it it's three times so it's not really f five uh, zero point five five second like cast time it's much higher so, so I don't like it and plus commander strike gives like target invulnerability to physical damage by ten percent so I can also buff my other friends like barbs rogues hunter rangers and even companions, because most companions, like the most important ones, deal physical damage. So, popping Commander Strike also buffs your companions and melee classes that deals physical damage. For my daily, I use Mowdown all the time. 
because it's just too strong. And I use second wind if I'm in trouble. <laughs> and the class feature, vigorous strike, 10% crit crit critical hit. You can also play with Enduring Vengeance, but the thing with that is that every time you enter an instance, it resets. So if you want to speedrun with your group, you like you will get like maybe one or two stacks, but you need to wait like 50 seconds to get all five stacks, which is a pretty long time if you enter a, a trial or any dungeon, or if you die. If you die, you lose all your stacks, so you need to wait again 50 seconds to get them again. So I don't play with it for that reason. I use momentum for bull charge, it's really strong. And again, all bottom feats. You want all bottom with a vengeance for the Anvil of Doom. Prepared slam, you don't really need that, but like, it's just there. It, it, it doesn't have affect the build. Rolling hatred to regen all of your vengeance pretty fast after the use of weight of vengeance. Striker mark to do more damage with your daily when you have committed strike on and executioner cut to deal more damage when the target is low for the boons uh, those are the the boons they might not be ideal i might not have all of them but that's what i use you can screenshot that i use a uh, lingering medicine because it's not only a pvp thing but when you use a health stone you basically enter god mode for like 10 seconds or 30 seconds yeah 30 seconds so you are basically unkillable <laughs> with the the heal over time so it's really strong uh, struggle boons accuracy defense or awareness anything you want there and uh, revive sickness because or you can also play with group heal with potion and if you want to play with potions and all and PvP, you don't need. PvP, you don't need. For companion, I play with the Cold Iron Warrior, but you can also play with the uh, the Air Archon, I believe, that deals similar damage, or the Zuna if you want. Doesn't really matter. It's just a small percentage lo percentage loss, not really something major. Uh, for the companion gear, I play with any kind of 1300 companion gear I got. So <laughs> the first three I got, I just played with them. I don't care what, like which stat they they give, I just use them. So if you are like if you got a lot of them, you can be a bit a bit more picky about them. But I just use the the three thirteen hundred companion pieces I got, and all indomitable for the companion. The the stat loss is not really that big, so. It's more important to boost your company damage and just just to boost yourself for 0.1 dam 0.1 percent damage. <laughs> and for the enhancement, I play with uh, acute senses. It boosts your own uh, combat advantage by 7.5 percent. As a DPS in a single target trial situation, like most of the other ones, like armor break, that just like nerf the enemy. They, the tanks are the healers plays with them so all that's left is just to to, to boost yourself so that's what I that's that's why I use it and max uh, max uh, item level contribution of course all 10 mythic uh, companions and for the companion bonuses that's the most uh, <laughs> thing that people don't may, may not agree with my build but I prefer to play with Brunor Bullward. Wolfgar and Dritz. Those are the new companion of the hall, and I like the 5.6% awareness and defense that they it give the Brunar one, and the fact that it also boosts your other two companions there. So if you would play with something more like offensive, like I don't know, uh, anything that gives like yeah this one accuracy combat advantage, it, you will lose some of the other two stats. So for me. I prefer to play with Brunor because <laughs> I gain more defense stats and it also boosts my other offensive stats. So uh, I think that's the, the best way to play it if you want a perfect balance between tankier, tankiest and DPS. I also use uh, the battery for 11% damage versus bosses and the golden cat, but golden cat can be really expensive. 
uh, because I put a lot for that. But you can also play with Alchemist Discipline for a bit less combat advantage, but a bit higher like crit chance. So it's not really s different. It's just a bit better the cat, a little bit better, not that much. So you can play with Alchemist Discipline. It's the the normal Alchemist, and that's it for the the companion. And now for the mount, I use the toad, as always, dominant force, because I like a bit of power. Uh, for the insignias, I play with the domi mostly dominance, some brutality, some uh, scales, dominance, dominance, scale, dominance, 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 aggression, brutality, dominance, dominance, and assassin's covenant, wallet inspiration, wallet inspiration, Artificer Persuasion and Gladiator's Guile. So that's the the way I play it. It's uh, other people can play with uh, like c Commander, what is it called? Combat Combatant Maneuver because it works with Bile Torn. I just learned like you can just attack an enemy with the Bile Torn procs. It control the enemy, so you have basically 2.5 uh, k combat advantage permanently on a target. So that's why people use that. I just learned that. Maybe I will use it in the future. But for for now, that wa that was the build I use for all of my dungeons I did in the past. So yeah, um, that sums about it. And for the my three slots there, play with two alliance battle horn because it just gives a bunch of AP gain, and I love AP gain for popping more dailies. So that's why I'm doing that. But I would show you. So when I enter the fight, the first thing I do, like I let the tank take aggro, and after that, um, like I'm close to the target, I just just use one, like AV slash. I use full charge, envelope of doom, and after that I pop my artifact because I have two percent left. Like I lose two second off of my encounter when I pop my my. My uh, artifact. And after that, I use Comet Strike. Like my other two encounters will be on cooldown, so I will use my daily. So I will just regen my daily and show you that to you a bit faster. Because when you enter the combat, you will get your daily. Basically, I will come close. Will use this. Use my artifact. Imagine that, and pop my daily and pop my toad. And after that, I would just keep at willing until my other two encounters come back, my full charge and envelope of doom, and I keep attacking with heavy slash. And I just pop my encounters whenever they are ready to pop. This, and sometimes when I really want my daily back, I do the canceling, which is doing that, that, that. So. Basically, you just heavy slash, you just press your left stick or your block mode, you enter your block mode and you release your block mode and you attack again. So if you're experienced, you can attack pretty fast with it. And it regen your, your daily pr like two times faster than usual. As I showed it in my one of my oldest videos, like how to do the cancelling, why that works. So that's basically the thing I do for a single target rotation. Just pop my every encounters I have. Try to do to cancel everything because you can not only you can cancel your at wills, but you can also cancel your daily. So I played a lot of PP and I got pretty experience with it. So basically, when you pop your daily, you can cancel it right away can block, it doesn't cancel the second hit from mow down. Like you hear the first one, like ching, you block, de-block, and you will hear the second one, ching. So you can basically do like another encounter at the same time as your daily, at the same time as your other hit of mow down hits. So that's, that's why I do the cancelling. Also like you can cancel other encounters. Personally, like, Commander Strike, it's not really worth cancelling, but Bull Charge, I think it's worth, like, for example, you just 
like you you just split from the boss because you had the, to do a mechanic and you want to come back fast just bull charge shield like block deep block instead of being stuck into like a landing animation you just cancel the animation and you just continue attacking so you can do the same if you are close to the boss with bull charge you can also cancel envelope of doom if you want but it's not like that big of a deal, it's just extra steps I do to regen my da my daily faster. Every time I do an encounter I try to cancel it for, for, for it to give me some action point gain. So that's the idea be behind all of my cancelling. And I just cancel everything. On a controller, it takes a bit of, of practice. I don't know about like PC, because I don't play PC. If it's easier or harder to quickly cancel block and like use block and de-block at the same time almost but on the controller is just pressing the left stick twice so you press it really fast and after a bunch of hours and maybe hundreds of hours you will get the timing right and you will know like how it works without being stuck into your block animation like you don't want to attack with your your block or you don't want to attack with your this attack you just want to use your heavy slash so now that I showed you how it works in theory on a dummy uh, I will do some tr a transition to show you how it works in a dungeon Okay buddies, now that you saw my single target build and how that works in actual combat, I will show you my AoE build. It's like one of the first video I show you an AoE build because I never really used an AoE build before. Like in uh, in Infernal Citadel I was playing Vanguard and I never played the Dreadnought, but with Vault of Star it's actually the first mob dungeon that I use in AoE loadout. So that's what I will show you. It's mostly to do Vault of Star, but it can also be applied for any other content. So basically I just switch my loadout and I use... Like I would not show you all the build once again, but just the most important parts. So first of all, you you must like use a lightning enchantment on mobs. You can also play with Barltorn if you are not rich enough to buy both of them. But ba lightning is just really strong on, on mobs. Uh, after that, uh, there's also the Vivified Primal Raid that gives more action point. So when you kill an, an enemy, you gain 3% action point, which is really strong when you, there's multiple enemies there. And I also use uh, the, f the the journals because like a lot of people use the end venom on mobs, but personally I, I prefer to use Frozen because it boosts other people, not only myself and... That's what I, that's what I run in Vault of Star on mobs, and again the the master the master craft weapon. Um, oh yeah, the build the bu the build is really important. So personally, I use a bull charge, tremor, and onslaught. Like tremor is for AOE, onslaught is for AOE, and bull charge is just to close the gaps between enemies and go to the mobs first, I guess. Earth shaker. It's an AoE daily, and I use second one if I'm in trouble in Vault of Star and I don't want to die, I just pop it. Like, for example, in the Labyrinth, when you get teleported and there's enemy just aggroes right to you, I just... Sometimes I, I don't have a choice than to pop it in order to survive the hits. And I play with the Reeve most of the time, like, because it's an AoE encounter. Uh, I, are we at will? So I just use that, and an heavy slash to 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 boost my personal damage and other kind of uh, encounters. Uh, for another class feature, again, vigorous strike and momentum, and for defeats, heavy slash and crushing blow. So that's that's uh, similar to the single target, but you play with heavy slash and crushing blow. Crushing blow 
uh, you need like a lot of vengeance and you have a chance to get an addi additional 100% magnitude damage so that's that's really strong on mobs and I use heavy slash because I use reef often and my reef procs heavy slash which gains more damage by itself for the next heavy slash so I just use a couple of reefs on multiple mobs it procs heavier slash and I can do like high damage to a single mob and just redo the same thing again and prepared slam I use that because after e every single heavy slash my uncounters that hits multiple targets so you want to you really want to hit multiple targets with that with your tremor or onslaught and it just gives them a, an additional 280 magnitude separate hit so you will not see a, a damage increase for your like tremor hit but it will add a second hit like that is 280 magnitude and you can also use here land waster, but I don't like it. I don't like to use to lose all of my all of my vengeance points. So I just play with something useless like striker mark. But it can also be useful because if the enemies are vulnerable by any kind of physical vulner vulnerability, then your daily gains 400 magnitude. Your earth shaker gets more magnitude. For now, Executioner Cut, that deals more damage when like, when the enemies are less than 30% held, which is which happens pretty often. And you get some Vengeance back. So that's the, the build. I will, after this uh, sh build showing, I will show you the actual combat. Like how, it af like how you do that on mobs. When I, I, I did the Vault of Star. For the boons and everything else is pretty much the same. Um, companion, you, you use a Zuna instead of a Cold Iron Warrior. Uh, the companions are the same except there's an 11% boss damage increase that I removed there. So I just use any kind of co companion that gives offensive stats. Personally, I use the 3.8% uh, accuracy and 3.8% uh, combat advantage. And Alchemist again. Yeah, that's pretty much the how we build. And I also use a combat uh, power divine intervention, for the wings to blast all the enemies around you. And yeah, the the companion, the mount bonuses are the same or similar with similar insignias, just to match my stats with the small gear changes. So yeah, now that uh, yeah the, the those things are the same as my uh, single target build. So now that I showed you my AOE build, I will show you how it actually works in combat with this little clip from Vault of Star. So, hope you enjoy! Thanks, buddies, for watching this uh, video. I will. I hope that you will that you like this video first of all. And if you have any questions, you can ask them in the comment section. And I will do an updated build with the the new changes at mod 21. So stay tuned for another build. But the essence of the fighter will remain the same. The feats and powers will mostly re re remain the same. 
all that will be different is me being a bit stronger gear wise and some stuff I would switch around. So stay tuned for another video and bye bye buddies.